and we were into the into the uh, Bible or into our, our prayer book, and I heard a crash outside, and I stepped to the door, the entrance door to the to the uh, room we are in, to the to the uh, to what we call our synagogue now, and I pushed it open and I saw a body on the steps. And I realized that the the crash I'd heard must have been a gunshot. And at that point, the rabbi pushed myself, Carol Black, Mel Wax, and himself into the storeroom. There was a pause in the shooting. Mel Wax pushed the door open, and I, I tried to stop him, but he pushed the door open. I hear some shots. He falls back into the room. Um, there's a pause, and then the door opened again and this time towards the inside. I'm pressed up against the wall. Carol is, is kneeling on the floor to my right, and the gentleman walks in with a long gun, and I could see the, the jacket he had on and, and, and a pair of pants of some sort. He didn't see us, thank God, because we were in perfect. The only, the only thing I had in my hand was the cell phone, and it's a dumb phone, so it doesn't light up when I'm talking on it, thank God. So he looked, he, 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 I could see that he looked around only because there was a shaft of light as he opened the door. He stepped over Mel's body, didn't pay any attention, stepped back and walked out. And I heard footsteps and I didn't know where they were coming from. And, and then I heard voices and the voices seemed to be coming from behind me. And I, do, I don't know, time, yeah, the time just kind of goes like an accordion. You don't know how, how, how many minutes went by since the last shot or anything like that. Uh, but then the door up there opened and we could see a shaft of light and an officer in a SWAT outfit, a SWAT uniform came down and got us out. And I had checked Mel's pulse before all of this, you know, after, after the, most of the shooting was done. He was gone. I could tell he was dead.